Hey yo, how's it going guys? Baby Bear 4812 here coming at you one more time. Today with uh, what I think is a tricky problem actually. The problem is evaluate division, problem number 399 on lead code. It's tagged as medium. Uh, I, I really think this one should be tagged hard, but I don't make the rules. Uh, so it's, it's currently being asked by Amazon, Google, Facebook, Bloomberg, and Microsoft. Uh, you've heard of some of those companies. And I think what makes it tricky in part at least um, is because I think that it's a bit deceiving in the sense that it puts those of you with a uh, who are mathematically inclined at a slight disadvantage I think you usually had an advantage but this time around I think it makes it a bit trickier because of where your kind of head goes or may go by default so let's uh, let's take a look at the question then we'll dive into the solution so it says we're given equations in the form a over b equals k where a and b are variables represented as strings K is a real number, and it's a floating point number, okay? Given some queries, return the answers. If the answer does not exist, return negative 1.0. They do tell us the input is always valid. We can assume that we're, evalu we're evaluating queries uh, with no division by zero, no contradiction, none of that stuff. So we don't need to worry about error checking and all that. Um, I, I think this would get a bit messier if we, if we needed to. So we don't really need to worry about that here. So... Uh, we're given equations, values, queries, and, and obviously the expected uh, result. So uh, what I've actually done is I've, I've copied it over here because I think it's a bit easier to look at this way. Um, and, and let's kind of take a quick walk through of what, of, you know, how to understand the input and then ultimately what we want is output and, and afterwards, you know, how we're going to get there. So first thing we're given is, is uh, I wrote as an E for equation. So we're told that we've got these two equations, a divided by, or they're not equations yet, but statements, you know, a this represents a divided by b, this represents b divided by c. The equation would be, along with this values array you're given, is a divided by b equals two, b divided by c equals three, okay, or 2.0, 3.0. These are the queries that are gonna be running as input, okay? So in this specific example, what we need to do is to say, Let's evaluate what would a divided by c be. a divided by c turns out to be six, so we expect the output to be six. b divided by a we expect to be zero point five, so on and so forth. We return everything in this in this result. Okay, over here. So the reason I think this may put some of you mathematically inclined folks uh, at a disadvantage is because your head may originally go kind of like minded to like, oh, well, this looks like linear algebra. So it's like, well, I've got, you know, if I know that A over B is, is two and, and, and B over C or maybe just algebra, not even linear algebra per se, um, B over C is three. Well, I can kind of, you know, maybe try to move variables around set the equations equal somehow. And then maybe you realize that, you know, A over B times B over C is just you know, those cancel out. So you get A over C equals six. It's like, okay, cool. So like you're picturing these systems of equations in your head and um, and so you're picturing these these equations in your head and figuring out how to work those out mathematically. And if you if you try to take that approach, I, I think you'll be sitting here and, and kind of scratching your head for a while. Um, and and that's why I think that this one is, is tough and not obvious because it's easy for your head to go here. Keeping in mind the context that we have, given, you know, we're on lead code, you're preparing for your tech interview, we need to think about what we're going to do um, in terms of like, do there exist data structures that can kind of help us out here, okay? And so keep that in the back of your mind as we as we kind of walk through. I, I just want to look at a few cases of this output first so we get a, a real holistic understanding, then we'll jump back to this point on, on what we need to do with data structures here. All right. So like I said, a, a, you know, A over C is six. Okay. We, we kind of mathematically put that together here. B divided by A. Well, we have A divided by B, which we, we know is 2.0. That's a very ugly two. Uh, it looks like a one. Oh boy. 2.0. Um, we, so B over A must be reciprocal half. It's like, okay, fine. Simple enough. And we get A E. Well, we realize like E is not really in there and so we're returning negative one here because as for instructions it said uh return negative 1.0 if the answer does not exist so we're like okay so this is one scenario maybe i'll, I'll, I'll kind of I'll put a star here so we got regular division that's one scenario uh division with an unknown variable like we, we didn't have an e in here so we're just going to return negative one when we see a variable there so you might start to to think like 
okay, maybe I've got to I've got to keep these variables somewhere. Maybe like a set or a hash table uh, that'll tell me all the different letters or variables that I come across, and um, and then you know if I see one that I don't like, I'll just spit out negative one no matter what. A divided by a, so a number divided by itself is is one point oh. It's like all right, cool. That's that's easy enough. So maybe we put a star there. Um, and then we get x and x. We're returning negative one here, even though we we kind of know that uh, any number divided by itself, uh, barring zero, of course, uh, will give us one. But because x is unknown in the context of the variables we're given here, we we will return negative one. So it looks like three things are two things. Three things are happening here. One thing that's happening is when we've got, you know, one scenario is if we say. Uh, the numbers aren't even in the set. So first we can kind of check the numbers and be, uh, and be like, well, if number uh, not in set, okay, that's easy, we just return negative one. Um, otherwise, I think the really simple case is a, a number divided by itself. So maybe I'll say, you know, uh, shorthand a divided by a, if we have something like that, we can return one. And when I say return, I mean, I guess add it to this, uh, this results array here. And then the third one, which is really where the bulk of the work is, is actually going to be, you know, regular division. And, and this is where we're going to make our, make our money. That is extremely ugly writing. Put a question mark here for now. So, like I said, regular division, this is where, where things just get weird. So, again, this linear algebra approach ain't going to help all so much. So, we think to ourselves, and especially when you're, when you're looking at this kind of cross multiplication here, it, it kind of looks like, well, you know, if I, I know what A over B is and I know what B over C is, is there a way for me to get from A directly to C? This is what kind of did it for me. When I, I tried to do this and I noticed the cross multiplication that these items cancel each other out, it was like, well, I can get to A, or I can get from A to C via B potentially. And I think that's kind of the key in, in kind of recognizing that, in fact, we may need some sort of uh, like a graph structure to order this question. And, and this is like, I think that's the, the crux of the problem is it's, I don't think it's obvious, at least it definitely wasn't to me, um, that like a standard evaluate division problem, we would actually solve with the graph. So let's think about that for a second. You know, if I, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep using this example. I've got A, B, B, C, or, or two and three. If I've got, so I got a, if I try to turn that into a graph, I had A. So if I think about A divided by B, well, we said that was gonna give us 2.0. Okay, cool. And we know B divided by C is 3.0, right? And what did we say A divided by C was? Well, A divided by C we knew was 6.0. And so it actually, it, it turns out if you kind of follow this logic that if we multiply every value along the way from start to finish, we get the value of, uh, of that division that we want. And I think that's pretty damn cool. Like, again, I don't think that's intuitive at all. Uh, it wasn't for me, like I said, I'm sure there's at least one person watching who, like it wasn't intuitive for them either. But that's, that's the key here to solving this problem. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me again. The, the interesting thing is, is that we can actually also notice that Let's reverse this relationship. So I can go B divided by A, and all that will be is the reciprocal of this value. So this will be 0 0.5. And, and this one, C divided by B, will give me uh, right 1 over 3, which would be 0 0.33. I'll leave it at 0 0.33, right? Which is the float. So all of a sudden, I can do A divided by B, A over C, B over A, B over C, C over A, C over B. I can do all three of these once I set them up in this in this graph structure, and so that is like understanding this and getting to here is a large chunk of the work. The coding is a bit involved as well. I'll be honest. So maybe this might be a, a bit of a longer video, It'll probably be in around the twenty minute mark or so. But yeah, this is like this is what we need to get to. We need to understand that there are three different scenarios that we deal with, and that we we can actually represent these not the queries, but the equations and the, and the values that were given in the context of a, I guess, bi-directed graph in a way. So, yeah, the, um, the way we're gonna wanna think about setting this up, by the way, you can pause the video if you wanna think about how you would set this graph up. Um, 
I, I like to do a via and adjacency list. I think those are the most intuitive. And maybe we can do something like this. As we're adding items in, we can kind of say, well, um, I have A here, and, and what do I want my, my value to be? Well, you know, A just, is just pointing to B right now, but there's no reason why there couldn't be another variable D in here. And, you know, maybe we're given what A divided by D is. And so it could have many more, um, many more other kind of neighbors. So typically we'd, we'd put that in, in an array of sorts, right? The issue is, is if we want to actually traverse through all of these, and while we're traversing to know the value of the division of every step, which is what we need, then I would argue we actually need to put one more nested object in here. So here we have A is connected to B, and then A, B, 2.0 would be the value, okay? My next one that I would have would be something like, you know, this is, how do I, there. Uh, then we've got B. So from B, we can actually go to two places. We can go to A, which will give us 0 0.5, or we can go to C, which will give us 3.0, right? B divided by C was three. So that's the, the B value entry. And then I, I think you get it for C, which we're gonna go to B and, and uh, yeah, B goes to C, C goes to B. So when we're adding these in with every kind of a equation value that we visit, we also gotta add its reciprocal in so we can, we can jump in any direction, all right? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna build this graph we're gonna set ourselves up to do these three scenarios, and then we're gonna think about when we actually need to do the division. Well, actually, we're not gonna think, but we kind of went through it. We realized that to do this division, we're gonna to have to do some graph traversing. Uh, the solution I'm gonna implement is DFS, so I, I believe you can implement the same thing with, uh, with BFS. I just find DFS a touch more um, intuitive, all right? So what we're gonna end up doing here is we're going to call some sort of a recursive helper function to, to do a DFS for us to see if we can actually get to where we wanna get. So, uh, at this point, I've talked long enough. I'm sure you're sick of me already. Let's, uh, let's jump into the code and see what we can make happen there. So, I'll move this over and, and give ourselves plenty of space here. A couple things we wanted to do. One was we wanted to say make graph, and then two was do calculations, all right? So, um, I'm not gonna do any error checking here because we were told the input would be valid and all that. So we're, we're kind of safe there. So the graph we said that we wanted was, was just gonna be a, a dictionary. And I, I know there's a way to do this with, I think like default uh, dictionaries and, and maybe grouping by using the zip function and stuff to make this a, a slightly bit less verbose, but I'm gonna stick with the first principles here and really build it out from scratch, okay? Um, so what we wanna do is this, is we wanna start by going through all the equations um, in, uh, in order to, the equations and the values, excuse me, so we can see, um, so we can see like who the what the neighbors are, the neighbors really like where the division is happening, what the values of that division. So what I'm going to do is this: is I'm going to say, so typically what I'd want to do, you know, in equations comes in this uh, in this nested array format. So what I could do is something like I'll call them num and, and den for numerator and denominator uh, in equations. Okay except I also want the values as well. So I, again, I think you, you can definitely zip these, like the equations and the, and the values together, but what I think I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna track the index with i, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to put these in parentheses so then we can actually uh, enumerate through equations. What this allows us to do is basically say, look at the index I'm in for each equation so I can find the corresponding value, and then get the numerator and denominator as well, which, which kind of come in this, in this one package here. So. What I want to say is this, is if my numerator is not in my graph, then what I want to do is I want to say graph numerator is going to be some empty object for now. Then, or if it's already in there, we can say that graph a numerator is going to have, so this is now referring to an object, right? That object, we want to have a key of denominator. And the value that we want there is the actual value of the, of the division. So what we'll do is we'll say, equals values at i, all right? And so the other thing that we wanna do also is, is to do the other way around now. So we're doing numerator over denominator and then we're gonna do denominator over numerator. So we'll say if denominator not in graph, then graph of the denominator is also gonna be some empty object. And finally, um, graph denominator at numerator. Now again, pointing the other way around, 
uh, will be oops will be equal to one divided by uh, values of i, so just the reciprocal. And that's all we need to do. That's going to be the adjacency list for our, excuse me, for our graph. Uh, again, points both ways and actually tells us what the values of the division is. Now, here's the, the second part was to actually do calculations, okay? So we're gonna need to have some sort of, I'll, I'll call it a result, right? And I'm super creative. Uh, we're gonna return the result after we, we walk through, well, all these queries. So. The, the queries are basically as follows. We are going to want to say uh, for, maybe I'll call them numerator and, and denominator again in, in queries, right? So queries is also a, yep, it's a nested array. So we can say for, for numerator and denominator in, in uh, queries, okay? And so here we said there were three scenarios. And the first scenario we had, let me just double check. Uh, so if the number is not in a set, if we're dividing a number by itself or regular division. So we can say uh, if num not in graph or den not in graph, then what we want is to uh, re result that append a float of negative one or, or negative 1.0. Otherwise, we said if, if uh, the numerator equals the denominator, then result out append float one, okay? If only the question was this easy, but we got to do that last part. Else, what we're going to want to do is we're going to, you know, basically result out append um, the result of a DFS call. So self dot DFS, and we'll figure out what the heck we want to pass into there. Eventually, this will run through all the queries, and we will we'll spit out the final result. So to actually make this this DFS graph, we're going to have to push in a couple things. One is going to be the graph. I'm sorry, I said DFS graph. DFS traversal of a graph. First thing we're gonna to have to put in is the graph itself. We're gonna want the numerator and the denominator, which will kind of act as our starting and ending point. We're going to wanna to keep a product going because we said as we jump from one item to the next, we need to multiply by whatever the result of the division is. Uh, so I'll keep that as, as one for now. And we're gonna keep it as one. So once we start multiplying things, they're not there's no kind of value that's already altering the modification. Finally, the last thing I'm gonna pass in is actually going to be a visited uh, set or array, so I'll, just, I'll, I'll create a, a new set here. And we'll use that just to keep track of the nodes we've already visited so we don't end up getting in cycles during our DFS. So uh, this is actually it, apart from obviously this helper function, which we're gonna write now, this is the, the bulk and the entirety of what's going to go into this main calc equation method. So now for the actual implementation here. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is to say, let's take our visited set and add to it the, the numerator or maybe our our starting point. Maybe I'll call this start and end. I feel like that might be a, a bit more intuitive. Um, once we do that, we also want to say, let me, um, let me think, let me get all my neighbors from this, from this actual point. So I want to get All right, so let's get this thing implemented. First thing we wanna do is to take the visited set and add to it the, the starting point. And with that starting point, we wanna get its neighbors as well. So we're, we can say something like neighbors equals, um, so it'll be, uh, excuse me, graph of start, all right? And then we've actually got, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna set an answer variable. I'll set that answer variable to, to negative one by default and we're eventually gonna return it because what we wanna do is to basically do our, our DFS and search through all the different possible paths. If we don't ever end up finding and doing any multiplication that we need, uh, this answer is gonna stay as negative one, so that's what we're gonna return. Otherwise, um, otherwise we're, we're gonna return the answer itself, so we'll, we'll modify that variable uh, in just a few steps. Really what we wanna ask ourselves first is whether or not the point that we wanna to get to this end is in our neighbor set right now, or in our neighbor object. So if the end is in neighbors, then all that we wanna do is we wanna see that the answer is gonna to equal to the product we have so far times uh, like the value to get to this, to this end here. So times, I guess it would be uh, neighbors end. All right, that's it. Otherwise, so we wouldn't get into this if, if this was the case, we wouldn't get into this else statement, we would just jump out and return the answer. Otherwise, we're now essentially going to need to loop through all of the neighbors 
and check each one of them individually. Now the neighbors uh, exist within a, an object themselves because the graph of start rate is, a, is another object. So what we can do is we can say for a neighbor and value um, in, uh, and we'll do neighbors.item. So this is actually going to return a, a nested array of uh, key value pairs from this object. And what we're gonna say is this, if there's a neighbor that we haven't visited yet, go visit it, okay? So if uh, neighbor not in visited, then we want to go visit it. In particular, we are curious, that, like, like we're curious in knowing what the answer is going to be after we visit it. Once we do this multiplication as we go, so I'm going to say that the answer is going to equal self uh, DFS, and we're passing in the graph. The neighbors are new starting point. The endpoint is still the same. Uh, the product we're going to keep, and we're going to multiply it by the current value that we're at right now. Okay, so we can take that value into the count and then keep going. And finally, the visited. Okay. Now, we do all this work. Once we jump out of here, we want to know did we actually find an answer or not? Well, we found an answer if we're no longer at, at negative one here, right? So if answer is not equal to negative one, then we're like, oh, or float of negative one. We're like, oh, sweet, like I I found an answer. I don't, I don't want to keep checking any more neighbors. Like I got to where I needed to go. So I'm going to break. Once I break, that'll take me out here. We're going to return our answer and everybody's happy. And that's it, guys. I'm, I, I want to leave like the, the code here so you can see the whole thing in one screenshot. Let me let me run it first and just make sure I didn't make any silly mistakes. But I think we'll be good. That should work. I'm going to submit it. There we go. 98.82. Um, yeah. So just as a quick recap, what we did was we essentially noticed that this is a problem that we need to answer using graphs. And I, I hope the intuition we kind of built up there helped uh, convince you of that. Then we had to make the graph itself. We had to do the calculations. There were three different kind of conditions for combinations that we had to do. And finally, to, to do that, that last one, we had to do it by doing a DFS through the graph that we created. So this was our, our quick little DFS that we put together. Uh, I know this was a long video. I think it was a problem that deserved a long video because I, I don't think it's, it's intuitive at all. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys found it useful. If you did, you know what to do. You know what to click. You know who to share it with. Um, yeah and if not or, or you know if you have any other comments questions suggestions drop them down below as always i'm happy to address them and i will see you guys next time peace